Do you have less than 10 minutes to learn something new? The Latin Learner Podcast offers helpful information from experts in the school community on a wide variety of topics, ranging from social-emotional health to DEI efforts to learning strategies. The clock starts now, so let's get started. Now that so much of your portfolio is online, how do you best organize your digital self? Middle school is many things, right? But I also like to think of it as a collection of data points. Is this child, is this student ready to transition successfully to high school? My name is Bobby Oman. I am middle school computer science as well as eighth grade uh, team leader. Um, what did we do in terms of remote learning preparation? We focused on um, one component of the GOA Learning to Learn online course, and that was specifically how do you organize your workspace at home? Uh, what does it look like and how do you remove the distractions? Uh, secondly, we had different times throughout uh, the first semester where we were uh, trying to help the kids organize their digital selves. Uh, we've talked about Shovi, LMS, Romanet, et cetera, uh, Gmail. And so now that so much of your portfolio is online, how do you best organize your digital self? And so uh, going into second semester, we're going to continue to give them opportunities to delete apps that you're not using, respond to emails, uh, archive things, put things in folders that you're no longer in, in need of, unsubscribe to emails that are no use to you and are distracting you through the day. So organizing your digital self is one of the big things that we talk about. Uh, really emphasizing the established routines, using Calendly for appointments, most of us use Shobi, and then again, continuing to use their planner. That's what we did as far as preparation and going into remote learning. Middle school is many things, right? But I also like to think of it as a collection of data points. Um, and so remote learning provided additional data points regarding students and their task understanding, their task initiation, and their task follow through. It also provided data points for as far as like emotional and physical wellness. So when I say data points, it may be a little bit, you know, what is he really referring to? I'm talking about both uh, qualitative and quantitative data points, okay? So here's where we're going to, and here's what I'm, uh, we're gonna be encouraging the eighth graders to do this second semester. And I'm hoping that for other grade levels that, uh, you know, your students can start to be thinking about this. We're, we're trying to get these, uh, the eighth graders to use those data points to create self-reflection questions. So for example, regarding task understanding, do I participate in class? What do I do when I don't understand something? Like, you know, really getting them to think about where am I as a student um, uh, and in, in regards to task understanding. In regards to task and initiation, getting uh, the middle schoolers as a whole to say like, all right, when the teacher gives me a task, do I set meetings with teachers? What's preventing me to, from doing so? When I get an assignment and I don't need to meet with a teacher, am I initiating it? When uh, do I wait till the last minute? You know, like getting kids to think about themselves as learners. And then finally, one question that they could ask for task follow through is like, do I turn assignments in? Is there a gap between me finishing an assignment and then submitting it? Uh, what's, what's, like, what's blocking me from doing that? Um, we think it's super important, especially to help them reflect, is this child, is this student ready to transition successfully to high school? There is a fine line, right, between helping your child develop the skills they need and over helping. What also confuses that fine line is that at a certain point, they don't wanna hear your helpful feedback, right? Like that's just part of the, the journey of middle school. And, and, and there's kids along the different spectrum of that. So there's that fine line of like equipping them. So uh, I, would, I would just encourage uh, us as parents to take your observations, your data points from remote learning as far as when you look at your child, where are they in terms of task understanding? Do they understand what's assigned to them? Um, where is your child in, in regards to task initiation? Do you see them regularly setting meetings with teachers? 
Do you see issues um, or roadblocks for them? What are those roadblocks? Uh, do you see them following through on tasks? If not, what's preventing them from doing so? If they are, how can you encourage that more? Taking your observations as parents from remote learning, uh, because you see behind the scenes the things that we as teachers can't see, uh, and using those to form questions. Hey, so and so, uh, how were you? How was class today? How'd you participate? Did you raise your hand at all? Yeah, no, you didn't. Um, what's preventing you from doing so? Uh, for me personally, I have found just in asking those questions rather than telling my kids what to do, um, finding out like some of my kids have social anxiety and it doesn't take place in the classroom, but it takes place being online. Or another one of my kids kind of switched and vice versa. So again, hoping that those remote learning takeaways, we're gonna use those as a team to help formulate what we need to do to best transition kids uh, to the high school, uh, but hopefully, there's some pieces there that you already are doing, I know, uh, but maybe uh, could uh, use as well uh, as we continue and finish up second semester. Thank you for joining us for this episode of the Latin Learner Podcast. Check out other episodes on our website at latinschool.org slash podcast.